child. But after they get the child, still they cannot protect the child. Still sometimes the child will get sick, the child can get health problems, the child can get in an accident, and sometimes the young child, young baby dies. So, the mother and father cannot protect the child. They try to protect the child, but they're not able, they're not, they're not the, in, the controller. Hmm. So this is the nature of the material world that everywhere there's so much suffering. You may have a very good doctor and the doctor gives a very good medicine, but it cannot save you from birth and death. The real medicine for birth and death is to hear about the glories of Krishna. Just like if the man is drowning in the ocean or in the sea, and the man is drowning there and you try to save him, then you have to, you, 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 don't, you, you, don't, you don't want to just save the, the jacket, you want to save the person. The man, be, the man may be drowning in the sea and the boat is there, but it doesn't mean because the boat comes that the man will not drown. And sometimes when we have problems in the material world, we try to solve the problems and we make things worse, not better, it becomes worse. Sometimes you go to the doctor and you have a, a little problem and the doctor gives some medicine. After you take the medicine, the problem becomes much worse, not better. Yeah, and sometimes we and sometimes we think the problem is I need to get the job. So we get the job and then when we get the job then we have so many more problems. The man has to go to work, it's a big problem. Sometimes he has to go to drive for two hours or go on the train for two hours just to get to the office to go to work. Yeah, there are people, they live all the way in Krishna Nagar. They come from Krishna Nagar, they go to Calcutta every day to get work in the office and come home every night. Two, 
two, two and a half hours in the train every day. Two and a half hours to go, two and a half hours to come back. And they have to work in the city, Calcutta, no fresh air, very polluted. And they have to work with people who are all very competitive, people are all envious and nasty with each other. They don't like each other, they don't help each other, they're not friendly. But still they're thinking, I, I have good job, I work in the office, I'm in Calcutta. And they get paid, but then the government will take so much taxes, they have to pay so much in taxation. So, but, but after all the taxes are paid, then there's not much money left. And then they have to pay for going in the train every day, they have so much transportation to pay to go to the work every day. And they cannot eat food which their wife would cook at home when they're at home. Their mother or their wife would cook and they can have nice hot food but they have to bring their tiffin with them from the home every day and they have to sit and eat the food that's already cold. And then they come home at night, they're very tired, they've been working all day, and then come home, sit in a very crowded train to get home. When they get home at night, they're very tired, they just fall asleep. And then wake up the next morning and then go to work again, the same thing. And we think, people are thinking, oh, I, I'm very lucky, I have a job, I have a regular job, I'm making, I'm working in the office, I have no, no. they don't know how much suffering they go through. And if we, if we preach to them and tell them how the material world is suffering, they will say, no, no, it's all right, it's nice, I have a nice job, I make money, I'm happy. So people are so crazy, they do not see how much misery, how much suffering there is in this material world. And they get a little enjoyment, they get tiny little bit of enjoyment, they're thinking, I'm very happy. There's an example, the one man was in the, he was in the, in the, in the forest, and he was going through the forest, and then a, a tiger was chasing him. 
एग्जांपल दिनो उनसे कि एक जना मान से जो हो तो चाहे वन तीर जाने थो आरे वैसे वन तीर जाना केरी ये उटा जो टाइगर छा शेर छा तो लिसे पीछा गोन अथाल आरे so the man began to run and he didn't look where he was going and he was running and he fell in the well he fell down in the well but there was there was some there was some creeper growing through the bricks in the well and somehow he caught hold of the bricks and he was holding on to this creeper which was growing through the side of the well. There was a, there was a, a, a creeper or a, a, a branch growing through the, through the bricks and he caught hold of that branch and he was holding on to it. He didn't fall all the way down in the well, he just fell halfway down. So he was holding on to the branch and he looked up and he saw the tiger was up there on top waiting for him. And he looked down in the bottom of the well and he saw there was a big poison snake there. And he's holding on to this branch and the tiger's up top and the big snake is in the bottom. He's holding on there. And then a, a bee, a bee came by and the bee dropped some of the, the pollen, some of the honey which had been collecting. And that, pot, that honey, it fell on the man's face and it rolled down his face and came into his mouth and he tasted the honey and he thought, oh, very nice. So this is the nature of material world. So much suffering for a little drop of happiness. So what is the solution? What are we meant to do? So the, the Vedic scriptures are there to guide us and to tell us what is the solution to solve the problems of the world. Lord Rishabdev, he was a great incarnation of the Lord and he taught, he had 100 sons and he taught them. Before he retired, he was a great king, he was going to retire, but before he retired, he instructed his 100 sons about their duty. Lord Rishabdi's hundred sons, one, the chief one was Bharat Maharaj, he became the emperor of the world. And then there were nine other sons, they were called the nine Yogendras. They were all Paramahansas and they went everywhere preaching the teaching of the Bhagavad.
And then nine of the sons, they became kings, he gave land to them to rule. And then there were all the other sons of eighty, they were all brahmanas and they were great brahmanas, powerful brahmanas. So Rishabhdev told his sons that don't try to enjoy life just like the hog and the dog. Animals like the pig, they eat stool and they get happiness eating the stool. So that is the lowest kind of happiness. You don't want happiness like that. But human life is meant for doing some tapasya, accepting some voluntary tapasya. Because if we do tapasya, we can purify ourselves, we can purify the mind, and we can experience real pleasure. So what is that tapasya? What tapasya can we do? With some people they do monavrat, they take the vow, silence, I won't speak today. One time I was with another devotee, my god brother, we were distributing books in India and we saw there was this, we, we were driving in a van and we came by, there was this mountain and we saw in the mountain there was a temple in the cave in the mountain. So we thought, let's go over and have a look and see who's there. So we decided to go and we thought we'll bring, we'll, we'll, let's take a book there, maybe we can distribute a Bhagavad Gita. So we got across the field and we climbed up the mountain, got to the temple and we got in the temple and we found there's this one yogi there with a beard, not very old, not very old, young man, but had a beard, he's living in the cave alone in the temple, take care of the temple. So when we went in, the man, he waved his hand at us. He was saying, he put his finger in front of his mouth. He was telling us he was doing monavrat. He was not speaking to anybody. So we spoke to him and we told him about what we were doing, we told him about Hare Krishna movement, we told him about Prabhupada. 
मा तो तो गरी महाराज जले से महाराज जले वहाँ से ना पूरा करना था ना वो यारे रब अन्ना वो यारे कि हम लोग ये कृष्ण भगवान हम लोग को बारे में बोलने रब बताऊँ वो यारे प्रपात को बारे में बोलने रब बताऊँ वो यारे and the the man was listening and he was very impressed you know he was we could see he was very impressed so we showed him the Bhagavad Gita. And so he looked, he looked, he looked at the book. He liked it, and, and so we told him, you know, you can buy the book. But I said, we told him we're distributing the book. You can also purchase the book. So he had a little blackboard and some chalk. So he took his chalk and he wrote on the board, How much is it? So we sold him the book. We told him how much it was. He paid us. He got the book. Even though he was doing monavrat, he was able to buy a book. Hmm. And so, <laughs> this tapasya, people do these kind of tapasyas, monavrat. Some people do fasting for 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 austerity, for tapasya, they fast, they control the tongue, they don't eat. Sometimes people say, oh yes, I fast every Tuesday or I fast every Thursday. Oh, I, and, I, and, and then I say, I say, oh, very good, you don't eat the whole day. They said, no, I only eat breakfast and supper. I don't eat lunch. Breakfast and what, Maharaj? And supper. So people in the, this age, in this society, they cannot do much tapasya, very difficult for them. If we ask people to give up eating meat, fish and eggs, oh, it's a great austerity. Oh, they're so addicted, they're so, they're so accustomed to eat meat, fish and egg. If we tell them no cigarettes, no tea, no coffee, oh, Oh, very difficult. People are surprised. They think, oh, Hare Krishna, very difficult. So many rules, so many things you cannot do. But we're very happy to follow these rules. We think this is a very good way, healthy, nice life. We don't want to drink alcohol, we don't want to drink beer, it's horrible stuff, filthy, smelly. Mm. 
ko dinam chahan na kina mane inar sakai gwanda sore ka piye ka jinis hai so many people they suffer from bad health because they drink so much alcohol kune kune vyakti hai lai se aapno swastha bigre bigre chai sapai roxip eru piera just like smoking cigarettes we know smoke cigarettes very dangerous for health and the same way you drink alcohol you drink whiskey or vodka these kind of things they're very bad very dangerous for the body the burn the organs in the body And so we practice some tapasya. We don't drink. We don't drink even tea or coffee because they also have caffeine. They are also drugs. You drink tea, you see all the stains which they go in the stomach. It doesn't. It's not good for health. If tea, tea comes from China. It's Chinese culture. It's not Indian culture. Just like television. Television also Western culture, horrible thing. And so devotees want they we we like to do some austerity. We take pleasure in practicing some austerity. Just like on a kadasi, every two weeks we have a kadasi when we don't eat any grain or beans. That's very good for the body because the body gets a chance to take rest. Because it's hard work to digest grains and beans. So what we what people may think is austerity is actually good for us. It's helping us. Devotees like to, to wake up early in the morning. The morning time is the auspicious time in the day. There is a period called Brahma Muhurta. Which means one and a half hours before sunrise. So devotees who practice spiritual life, they will wake up early in the morning to take advantage for the Brahma Mahurta to do prayer and to do chanting at that time. You see, the Buddhists, they also wake up early in the morning that time. The Muslim also, they have their morning prayer also that time. So, 
devotees of Krishna. We also have our Mongol Arti that time. So, although you're not staying in the temple, still you should wake up early in the morning and worship and chant. Living in the temple or living outside the temple, the life is the same. We, we need to do a little austerity. We shouldn't think because I am householder, oh, I can sleep late. I don't need to get up. Oh, the, the program is just, just, some, just like the people who are not devotees, they will sleep very late and then they will drink their tea, they will lay in their bed and they will drink a cup of tea before they even get up in the morning. So their lifestyle, the life of the devotee and the life of the materialist are very different. People think, oh, to be devotee, Hare Krishna, Oh, so many rules, so, so, so austere, so much aust No, it's a very joyful life, very happy life. People see Hare Krishna people, they see them always happy, always singing and dancing, chanting in ecstasy. Nobody thinks Hare Krishna or Tapasya or Stevik. They, they think Hare Krishna people are always happy, always singing and dancing. So the, this, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. He came to make everybody happy by chanting and dancing. And by association with the holy name, we also purify the heart and we develop our love for Krishna. Yes. Love of Krishna is in the heart of everyone. We just have to awaken it by hearing and chanting. So Prahlad Maharaj is glorifying this process of hearing and chanting. He wants also to be engaged in this process. He is in praying to Lord Nishringadev. That give me that taste, that I, let me have that taste for your, your holy name and to chant your glories. Let me fix my mind on your lotus feet. So this month of Kartik has begun now 
it's a very good time for us to take advantage, to do more hearing and chanting. Yes. We know this Kartik, this is the name of Radharani. So this month is very dear to Srimati Radharani. So if we also, if we take shelter of this month to do more service, to do more devotional service, to do more chanting and hearing, then Radharani will be very pleased. And if Sri, if Sri Mati Radharani is pleased with us, she can introduce us to Krishna. And if Radharani will introduce us, then certainly Krishna will accept us. So even though you may not be in the Holy Dham, you cannot come to India, you cannot come to Vrindavan, but still you can be in the mood of Vrindavan by chanting and worshipping Krishna. Srila Prabhupada taught us that he said, wherever we go, that's Vrindavan, if we're remembering Krishna. Because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, he's always in Vrindavan. So if we're remembering Krishna, we're chanting his name, we're worshipping Krishna, then Krishna will also be there. And if Krishna's there, then that place comes, becomes Vrindavan. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written a nice song describing pure devotional service. And he says, Yedina Grehe Bhajana Deke Greheti Goloka Baya. He said, When I'm at home worshipping the deity, then my home becomes Goloka Vrindavan. So we encourage all of you to make your home also Goloka Vrindavan by nice yeah. devotional Krishna Seva. Are there any questions today? I don't think there is any question, Maharaj. Okay. So, Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Dhanabhat Pranams. Hare Krishna, Dhanabhat Pranams. Yeah, yeah, Maharaj, 
उसको फल स्व बंग तपस्या को फल स्व बंश भगवान ने फल भक्ति करना को लगी अब यह तपस्या भी भिंद तटस्थता कर जरूरी कि छेन क्या कुछ भक्त यहाँ कि भक्ति करना तपस्या करना जरूरी छेन है अंदाखे भगवान जी सब बीच तपस्या कर एक पटाई भगवान जीता में हेद्दे भक्ति करना तपस्या को फल बेच दिया फल सब स्वत मिले भाई इसको बारे में अलग महाराज ने स्पष्ट बनाई दी महाराज प्रभु जी that Lord Bishop Dev said to his son, Studul Tapasya Maharaj. And then on Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said that if you do, uh, if you do bhakti, then all the, um, all the kind of fate of Bhagavad, uh, sorry Maharaj, Bhagavad Gita's 8th chapter, it is said that if you um, do bhakti, then all the uh, tapasyas that you have done, the bad benefits of tapasya you will automatically get maharaj so he doesn't uh, he is asking you to believe them okay so we have to understand that that tapasya which is being recommended that is also bhakti ramle yo bunnu pachi ki jo tapasya bhannu bhayeko cha yo chai bhakti nai ho when we speak about tapasya as devotees we mean that those things in relation to devotional service. Just like waking up in the morning early to go to Mongol Arti, that's a tapasya, but that's bhakti. Not eating garbage food, not eating non-vegetarian food, not taking tea and coffee, this is all in relation to bhakti. We are not encouraging people to do dry renunciation. That is not bhakti. We don't do monavrat. We only talk Krishna Kata. That's the, the difference. They do monavrat. They stop talking, but we just talk only about Krishna. They stop eating. We stop eating anything which is not prasadam. We only eat Krishna prasadam. So our tapasya is in relation is it's it's for the service of Krishna. The Mayavadi they do dry renunciation. The Buddhists they do their renunciation is very dry. Market Vairagi, no, that's the monkey renunciation. Sukhatyagi. Falgu Vairagi. Is it Maharaj? Is it Falgu Vairagi? Yeah, we could call it Falgu Vairagi. Yeah. They're, they're denying the activities of the senses. They want, they want to stop the senses. They want to stop all the action. They don't see anything, don't say anything, don't speak anything, don't hear anything. 
के गर्ने प्रयास गर्छन् त भन्दाखेरि आफ्नो इन्द्रियहरूलाई बन्द गर्न कोसिस गर्छन् चलाउन बिल्कुल बन्द गर्न कोसिस गर्दछन् केही पनि सुन्न खोज्दैनन् केही पनि हेर्न खोज्दैनन् बोल्नै खोज्दैनन् त्यसरी बट द डिभोटी डज एभ्रीथिङ इन रिलेसन टु कृष्ण सी जो भक्त हो उनीहरूले चाहिँ सबै यही सबै कार्यहरू गर्छन् तर कृष्णको प्रति हियर अबाउट कृष्ण and see krishna see the deity of krishna and chant the names of krishna use the legs to go to the temple to worship krishna na krishna lai aankhale hechan na krishna lai krishna ko vigraha lai darshan gardachan na krishna ko bare ma sunchan na krishna mandir janchan aapne kutta chalaera krishna lai herna ko lagi their renunciation their their tapasya their austerity makes their heart hard they become proud but the devotee's renunciation will make the heart soft and it will awaken more attraction for krishna ra unerko jo In Chaitanya Bhagwat, there's a story about the one brahmachari who wanted to see Lord Chaitanya dance, and he he was a good brahmachari. He 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 was very strict brahmachari, and he only lived on milk and fruit. The Chaitanya Bhagwat ma ekjana, ekta story ancha ekjana brahmachari ko ki ma jawan brahmachari mano hunte ro ma sirf dud. महाप्रभु So this brahmachari he begs Shrivas please please I want to see I want to see the kirtan I want to see devotee stands I want to be there please let me come So Shrivas, after a long time, he decided. Well, he's a good brahmachari. He's very strict. He does, he's not a cheater. So he told them, "Okay, you you can hide in the room." you can hide behind the curtain so lord chaitanya came and the devotees came and they started the kirtan but after some time lord chaitanya said stop Something's wrong. I don't feel ecstasy tonight. The Lord Chaitanya said, "There must be somebody here who's not supposed to be here." Mm. So then the brahmachari came out and he said oh i'm very sorry i just wanted to see the kirtan I just wanted to see you dance i just wanted to watch And he said, "I'm a brahmachari, and I only drink milk and eat fruits. I don't eat any cooked food." Ramalayopani manu chari ki 
मैं तो ब्रह्मचारी हूँ मैं दूध र फल फूल मत आहार But Lord Chaitanya said to him, "Get out! Get out of here! I don't want you in here. You, 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 you just because you you think you're a you you're so proud. You're a brahmachari. You're so proud. You only live on milk and fruit. Do you think you can get love of Krishna by that? Get out! I don't want you. I don't want to see your face." You cannot get, you cannot approach Krishna just by doing this kind of austerity. That is not the way. Krishna wants devotion. He doesn't want that kind of pride. So the brahmachari became very humble and he fell at Lord Chaitanya's feet and he begged forgiveness. The Lord Chaitanya blessed him, gave his mercy. So tapasya is not the way, but we ha we do have to control the senses. So devotee's renunciation is in relation to Krishna. Not Falgu Vairagya, but Yukta Vairagya, renunciation which is in relation to Krishna. Anasaktasya vishayam itartam upayanjata nirbandha krishna sambande yukta vairagya uchate. Rupa Goswami describes that people, foolish people, they give up activities. They, they, they say, they give up, they try to give up the activities of the material world. So that is that is useless. Just like just like the river Falgu, there's one river called Falgu, and you, and, and you go there, you just see sand. It's like there's no water, but the water is below the sand. So you move the sand a little, you walk on the sand, you see there's water below the sand. In the, sa In the same way these foolish yogis, they give up material activities, But in the mind, they still have so many material desires. They're trying to stop all the, all the activities, but still in the mind, there's so many thoughts of desire for sense gratification. But if we engage in devotional service, then we can experience freedom from these material desires. Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, 
param drishtva nivartate, there's a higher taste, you get the pleasure of devotional service, then you can become fixed in consciousness. I'm sorry, Maharaj, I couldn't hear properly. When we, when we do devotional service, we can experience the higher taste. And and with the higher taste, our consciousness is fixed. So the process of bhakti yoga is superior to all other processes. It, it takes away even the desire for sinful activities. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Thank you so much, Manaji. Okay, so maybe we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much. So have, have a nice week in the service of this holy month. Remember, every day you have to offer a lamp and sing the Damodar prayer. It's very nice if you can offer a lamp every day. You get great benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gorbhaita Vrinda ki, Thank you, Maharaji, for your translation. Very kind. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandabad Pranams. Dandabad Pranams.